welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited about today's show. Excited yes. and nervous a little bit at the same time. And it's okay. We're talking about a topic that most African Americans, we don't talk about. But today we are standing, we are no longer afraid, and we making it okay to talk about. Um, I want to talk about... Oh, let me introduce. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I get so... I'm telling y'all, I get so excited. But let me introduce my guest. Well, let's start right here in the middle. Oh. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Shara Gibson. I'm a business owner, consultant, and a facilitator. Um, so I'm happy to be here this afternoon. Thanks for joining me. You can find me on Instagram at Shara G. And let's just say today, she is my co-host. So yes. all that other stuff, <laughs> that don't even matter. I called her. I wanted some woman power in the yes. studio with me today. So all that other stuff is out the window. Yes. Today, she is hosting the show yes. with Busy With B. Yes. Let's Happy go. To let's move to, to my girl. <laughs> I'm so excited she's here, but let me let her introduce herself. Hi, I'm Kiki. I'm not gonna give a. <laughs> I'm not gonna sell myself on here. I'm yeah. just Kiki for today. Yeah, she's her guest. she. Yeah, she's <laughs> my guest. She came along with me and just wanted to stand up, and we are gonna tell our stories together. So I'm just so proud of her. Um, we know each other from just kind of growing up together. We ran in different crowds, but look at us today. Here we are, mm -hmm. united. <laughs> So I'm just so excited. So really what, what brought me to today is um, the Bill Cosby thing, um, the, the, um, the Supreme Court guy, and just seeing how they respond to the women in the whole situation. Yes, Bill Cosby's situation is more racist, but you got to think, so many women are is accusing him of sexual misconduct. At what point do we look at that? I feel like, even me, myself, I was like, he's 80 years old. I mean, like, really, they're going to send him to jail? So I, I really was thinking of it. Yes, I do get it. He's the, the black, I mean, you know, he's the African-American one. You know, several Caucasians was accused of sexual misconduct. However, he's the one going to jail and serving the time. And, yes, that itself is political. That itself is not on us. You know, but at the end of the day, he did a crime. Right. And somebody's telling the truth out of all the women. Yeah. Myself was feeling the same way. I wanted to defend Bill Cosby. And it was just something in me was triggered to kind of, you know, when they say, oh, they wait so long, they wait so long. Me realizing and going through sexual abuse myself, mm -hmm. and I was much younger than the, the women that was coming out and speaking about Bill Cosby, it was like, I could remember it like it was yesterday. And I can't maybe remember exactly how old I was at the time, um, but having my own child, I can kind of narrow it down. So when I think of my memory, I think, I see myself at five or six, and it's not just my story, it's me and my sister's story, and yes, I got permission to share our story today. Um, but we didn't start remembering until we were well into our 30s. Um, and I got a phone call from my sister, and she told me. She was like, I keep having dreams of my dad on top of me. And it was like, that's the sister that sometimes we, the rest, don't always understand her. <laughs> and it was like the pain in her voice, um made me pay attention. And I was listening to her talk, and she was telling me of her memories. And I still hung up the phone with her with still the block in my mind. But once I got to a quiet place, I started remembering. And I started seeing my dad. And I saw him on top of my sister. Um, I remember him giving me baths and asking me how things feel and just how small I was. And um, I will say it brought us closer as a family to have that conversation because, yes, it's not like at 30-something I couldn't go to my dad. He was deceased, and he passed away in 1997. Um, so I couldn't go to him and, and have that conversation. Um, I know my mom is watching. I made sure, like, mom, watch. 
um, I do forgive my mother, um, but having my own child, I understand how it's my job to protect my child. And, you know, when we first start talking about it, because we late in 30s, it's just you full of resentment. I still felt like I wanted to protect my sister, so I went to my mom first mm -hmm. to have that conversation. And um, it brought us closer. And we, we talk about it, and I'm not going to say it's okay, but we... We we got through it and we found our way through. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's a part of my story. Well, that that is you know my story, but I want to get to Kiki. I want her to share her story because we're gonna just share our stories. We putting it out there in the universe, and we're gonna talk about just some of the things that you know how we made it through. But we're gonna just we're gonna talk about that. But I just wanted to share my story. And now I'm passing the microphone. <laughs> so my story is kind of similar to her. Um, I didn't get permission, so I won't tell who the other person is. Um, right. But um, I was being molested at the age of maybe around 10 or 11 um, for a while by one of my mom's boyfriends. Um, she has a pattern of dealing with what I consider no good guys. Um, for a while, I didn't say anything. Because, um, you know, as a child, you're scared, and they might threaten you, don't tell nobody, or if you do tell somebody, I'm going to hurt you, I'm going to kill you, or something. So um, the first person that I did actually tell was my brother. Um, at the time, he, we four years apart, um, I told him, so he told me to tell, tell my mother. I told her, and... She did nothing. Um, so from that point on, from the time that I told her and she did nothing, I didn't speak on it. I didn't say anything to anybody else because I'm saying the person that was mainly in my life that was supposed to protect me from this, if she didn't do anything, why would anybody else? Mm -hmm. So um, I never spoke on it. Again, I think uh, from that age, up until I think I was in college, maybe my sophomore year, I was a mentor at the YMCA. Um, I had pushed it in the back of my mind. I didn't really think about it. So I came across this little girl who was maybe, I want to say eight, seven or eight years old. Um, she came up to me and said, you know, I want to tell you something. I'm like, okay. She was like, do your daddy touch you? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, my daddy touched me because I wanted her to be comfortable with keep talking because I knew this conversation couldn't mm -hmm. go anywhere good, um, right. your daddy touching you. Um, so she went on to say, I think she remember probably from when she was four, her dad had initially started touching her, and then her uncle, her dad was incarcerated at the time, and then her mother's brother had been uh, babysitting her and her little brother uh, after school and had been touching her. Um, actually penetrating her, um, the detail that she described it in, no child should know. So mm -hmm. I knew she couldn't have been lying. She talked about pornos, and she talked about um, when he ejaculated, the color of it. What the, It was just in too much vivid detail. Right, right. Um, I kept, like, joking and playing with her so that she could tell me more and more. So when I felt like it was enough, I had enough information, um, I let the program director know, and the uncle was on the way to actually pick her up after school, um, I don't. I didn't stay there enough to see what they did, but they did call the police um, to get them arrested. But those things like that triggered, you know, yeah. the, my memories. Yeah. And also, when I had a kid, that really did it. Um, right. I'm like, I gotta protect my kid because it, it can, even though I'm a woman, yeah. a female, it can happen to male. So. Right. Uh, after that, I kind of like, I always block it at different times in my life. That's what we But do. after having a child, um, it came back. Right. <laughs> and it, it now it's like, oh, no, I can't have this happen at, at all costs. I'm going to protect my child. Mm -hmm. So um, I started going to therapy for it. Um, and me talking about it, um, it kind of made me relive it. So mm -hmm. I stopped going because I'm like, I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to think about it. I kept thinking about it. Um, I'm getting aggressive. I want to fight. Mm -hmm. I want to defend people, whoever got touched or whoever's being anything. I want to defend you. Right. So um, now I hear about it more and more. Mm -hmm. um, so when you when I see your post, I'm like, oh, this is a platform to get it out there. Because 
it's it happens so often and frequent it's like the norm now right. and people don't talk about it because they like okay i've been touched they've been touched <laughs> yeah it's the and norm that's <laughs> one of the reasons why we're here and um i want to forever offer a platform for us to talk about things that normally we are afraid to talk about mm -hmm, yeah. and we you know you have this certain shame um and you just don't talk about it but it's just today is a new day you know and a lot of times when we come out we feel shamed even more like oh she's lying you know and this like from my, my one of my family members said you know when i did tell that i was going to share this story you know i just don't believe you I, don't, I just don't believe that you know dad would do that at the end of the day that that goes back to everything that's been happening on you know on the media everything that's been happening it's okay i respect how this person feels i still mm -hmm. love this person but you know i wouldn't make this up <laughs> you know what i mean right, right. <laughs> and it's just like at the end of the day is 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 this is the reason why I'm speaking up and I'm speaking out. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. It's generational though. It's passed down. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's passed down and it's passed down. So unless we start talking about it in our homes, unless we start making our kids aware, you know, of exactly what's going on, they not going to know. Cause I was so small. I didn't know what, I didn't know what sex was. I didn't know what it was, so I didn't know he was wrong. I used to squint my eyes and try to pretend like I was asleep, like I didn't see what he was doing, <laughs> and um, and we didn't know, so we never talked about it. We woke up the next day normal. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't know, but we know we were sore, you know, and I wanted to know, you know, and I had my own child by the time this stuff started surfacing, and I was just like, how could you not know, Ma? You know, I was yeah, angry. Yeah. How could you not know? I'm I'm in pain. Yeah. Like, how could you not know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, I was angry. You know, before because it was like I had my own child. And I was angry more so for my sister than myself. You know, mm -hmm. because we didn't know. We didn't talk about it to each other. We was too small. Yeah. And you got to think, back then, it wasn't social media. It wasn't yeah. It wasn't pornos. It was, you know, like for us, some, we didn't have we didn't have DVD players. We, had, you know, <laughs> so, so we didn't have a lot of things that you know our kids now have access to, and you know they learning about these things because of the access they had. But we didn't have that. Right. Well, you know, first I want to commend you, ladies, on sharing your stories because there's a lot of women out here who are scared to do so or don't have an avenue or a means to do so. Um, I'll be interested to know how did you all get through the process of forgiving your family members or forgiving your mom for what happened? You first. How did you start <laughs> with that? Yeah. Um, Have you forgave her though? Yeah, know. or did you forgive at all? For me, um, I have a sh issue with how, knowing how to forgive because I always question how do you forgive when you don't forget? Mm. So um, I don't think I forgave her because I'd never get any answers. Um, I think I sat down with her maybe a couple of years ago, um, you know, the issue with my child. Mm -hmm. So um, when I started to ask her questions, she went silent. Um, I wrote her a letter like, okay, well maybe talking verbally, not getting it. So if I write a letter, she can sit down and read it and maybe respond back to it. She didn't respond. So I think it's hard to kind of forgive when you have no closure or no answers as to why things happen. Um, so, okay. <laughs> so for me, um, and I kind of think of it more like analytical, cause mm -hmm. like I said, I'm going back to generational, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was a breakdown somewhere, you know? And I just feel like with my mom, I just love her so much. Like it's so crazy. Cause my mom, she, I'm sharing her story. She, you know, she grew up in the eighties and seventies. So it was a lot of drugs and things of that nature going around. Um, so it's like, I just always had a unique bond with my mother mm -hmm. and even in my adulthood, like I said, and that's part of our share that I live with my mom until probably a couple of years ago. You know, I always had a good, okay, look, I always, <laughs> look, I always, <laughs> had, I always had a good, good, you know, a good man or whatever. But it's just like, you know, I just, you know, my mom to this day is my best friend and I know 
in order for me to move forward, oh, I'm going to tell you this, though, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Therapy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in order for me to move forward, and then I just believe so much in God and just him being in everything and him not making a mistake, and I overcame. I want, you know, and I pray that you, Kiki, can come to a place where, you know, you may, she may not ever give you that closure or that understanding. I'm not saying my mom was great. My mother is not great, trust me, when it comes to communication, Mm. it comes to her believing in what she believes in. But for me, I just, having my own child, it was just, I just love in a whole different way, like, the block, the the blocking is real. So yeah. you know, and I think like me blocking for so long, you know, and me realizing life is just so short. But you know, again, we only get one mother. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, how I move forward with her, you know, as far as my own child or you know things of that nature. But for me, I feel like my mother has definitely learned her lesson. She's married. She's settled down. Um, Zoe's granddad is just, he love her so much. They argue, they, you know, it's just a beautiful relationship. Mm -hmm. So me not to forgive her is just like everything that we went through. I just watched her go through abuse with my dad, you know, and that's something else we'll talk about domestic, Mm -hmm. you know? So it was just like, I don't think she, I think she was just scared. And when I talked to her and some of the things she said, she was just like, he was the devil, you know? So she was emotional and, you know, I'm sure she would have done things different if she knew how. Um, I'm not mad at her. I just, I simply forgive her. I love the relationship her and my daughter has. Mm -hmm. I share my daughter with her, you know? So it's, it's fine. So I think also just one of the things that I want us to talk about, too, is that during this time of the whole Me Too movement, the Bill Cosby thing, the Brett Kavanaugh thing, it really irks my nerves how they try to discredit these women that are coming forward, (laughs) especially when they're like, oh, it's 30 it's um it's 30 years later. Where were you? You know, that's I just feel like that's just terribly unfair. And people deal with their traumas differently and things surface at different Different times. times. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that really irks me. Like women deserve a platform to anybody that has been a victim of abuse deserves a platform to say something regardless of how long it is. That's another thing. I don't think um, people shouldn't say anything because you think it happened 20 years ago, 30 Mm -hmm. years ago. There's no statute on that. So if it was... 10, 15, however long ago, if you feel like you want to speak up now, mm-hmm. speak up. Exactly. It's never too late um, mm-hmm. to say anything. Great point. And it, mm-hmm. especially if the person is still out there, you don't want it to happen to someone else. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Right. And just imagine not saying anything right. and it just keep happening over and over and over again. It's, it's a cycle. So until we stand, until we speak out, I mean, until they they have to walk in the embarrassment, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, you know that's that's the most. You know what I saw when I saw Bill Cosby, I started picturing picturing my dad, mm. and um, it was like, would I want my dad to pay for what he's done? You know, I think the embarrassment of it will be mm-hmm. enough for me at his age. Yeah, because you know what I mean? his legacy is totally tarnished, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I think more so for me, it was just like the walk of shame mm-hmm. was, you know, enough, you know? And it sucks. It took so long for this to happen, for this transition to happen. It took so long for, you know, it to happen, but it happened. And I, I it just... I just want us as women not to be shamed mm-hmm. because we speaking out. The man is always right. Yeah. <laughs> and some, for somehow, some reason, we we going crazy. We wrong. And, oh, she lying. Mm-hmm. Why, why yeah, would she like, lie? Right. right. Why would we lie? I'm not crazy. I'm not hysterical. I'm not too sensitive. I'm not emotional. This is my experience, and we should be allowed to say what our experience is without there being a cast of doubt Mm -hmm. or making it seem that I have to go to a courtroom and be judged on whether my claims are credible or not. It's pretty disgusting to me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I do have um, a a nice young lady that give us her time. She's a therapist here in the District of Columbia. She came to join us in the studio today. 
I'm just so excited that she would yes. do that. Yes. Um, and just to be here to kind of mm -hmm. let us know it's okay. Right. And um, if, you know, it's just mainly I'm just happy that we all can come together like this. Right. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It definitely. is, right. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to break, and when we come back, we'll have Stephanie Walker join us here on the stage to offer uh, some insights. Some insights. <laughs> Thank you. Some insights. <laughs> Do I have a mic? Okay. Huh? Hello. Hello. Okay. We're back on and I have. I don't. Oh. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're back on and I have Stephanie Walker. She's here. Hey, She's going to just give us some resources and just uh, tell us about herself yeah. and just, you know, a little bit about herself, where we can find resources and why is it okay to talk to a therapist? It's, it's definitely okay. Yeah. To talk to a therapist. I'm just Actually, learning that. And I'm in my 30s. So. That's one of the best things that ever happened to me. Mm, no my personal therapist will be on the show. Oh, nice. Yes. At the end of October, we are going to be discussing mental health, right. um, depression. I think that's going to be the focus. Ooh. And she may be on like every month after mm. that. Oh, because nice. it's, it's a, a huge topic in our community and it's something we don't talk about and no, we're afraid not of. at all Absolutely. so let's you know not to get off the subject oh yeah but i just wanted to to introduce stephanie walker and she's going to give us some resources 
and tell us why it's okay to talk to a therapist. They hold all the secrets. Oh, my God. My therapist is yes. like my best friend. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Legally obligated. So, yes, my name is Stephanie Walker, and I am really happy to be here. Um, you all are wonderful. I came in, and the energy is high, I must say. Mm -hmm. So let me just jump right in. Um, I'm a CBI clinician in the Washington, D.C. area, and I have some experience within the f past five years doing this work with children, families, adults, uh, high-profile cases, juvenile uh, involved, um, excuse me, juvenile justice involved uh, individuals, uh, and as well as the foster care system. So mm -hmm. it gets real. It yeah. gets very real. And unfortunately, my personal experience and my professional experiences are involved around children and families, mm -hmm. okay. people that you know. You know, just to jump right into it, that's what I heard you all talking about. But my name is Stephanie. I'm a therapist, and I have a therapist. Yeah. Okay, I just want to put that out there. <laughs> it, it, you know, like <laughs> I'm a therapist, and I have a therapist. Yes, yes uh -huh. absolutely. Um, there's so much to say on this topic, um, but yes, I have a therapist. And I um, am able to express things that I don't have to tell to anyone else. And so I would encourage everyone to definitely see a therapist um, if they can. But how do you do that? We, we have all of these, you know, things that we want people to do, but how? And how do we get more comfortable? And so um, what I would suggest is uh, practicing. You know, we, we really have to practice speaking up. Mm -hmm. Practice speaking up to teachers. You know, some I have other pa uh, family that are affected by uh, uh, cases of sexual nature, and w I'm literally having to teach family members how to speak up, young mm -hmm. and old, mm -hmm. what it's to do, yeah. and they're holding secrets. Yeah. It's not okay to hold these types of secrets because it causes so much pain, mm -hmm. you know, for everyone to come back around even, you know, that perpetrator's coming back around at family right. events, mm -hmm. you know, that's just something for example. But down to some resources and, and how to. Yes. 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 Uh, well, some resources I can say um, that I'm also a board member on the Exodus Project, so we focus on human trafficking awareness. So that is also involved in That's this. Excellent work. And, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we are partnered with a, a lot of people in the area. Uh, thanks to our CEO, but Courtney's House is one resource that you can Google. They're local. Fair Girls is another uh, place that you can Google. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, of course, a nat national sexual assault hotline. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rain. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, let's really talk about, you know, getting into it with interactions with people, right? right. So, so as far as that is concerned, um, when I talked about practicing, say, with a young child, you know, um, over the break, um, someone mentioned a scenario where, uh, child behavior has changed. Okay. You know, you have a student that is going to school, elementary school age, probably, or, or middle school, and then all of a sudden, you know, this A student, B student, happy kid involved, starts to rebel, slamming doors, mm -hmm. giving attitude, wanting to wear, you know, a different type of clothing. Okay. And then maybe they even show up with this type of clothing. Where did you get that from? Right. You know, it, so it, it goes really far beyond, and um, even for the church community, I must say, because oh, I'm, yeah. I'm a Christian and I go to church, and I love challenging people in the church about these things because you don't want to shun people and hurt them. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know, for instance, you know, say a, a young girl, she's changed her behavior, she's changed her style of dress, she's more uh, voluptuous sometimes in some cases, and, you know, some people, they just look at these people change. They just look at them. You know, we'll talk about them once they leave the room. Like, oh, my God, did you see her? She is just. It just doesn't. It, yeah. it, it don't come out of nowhere. Right? Mm -hmm. and that, that's the point you, you're making, and I get that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's, I want, because we're coming to the end of the show, and we definitely can talk forever yes. <laughs> about this topic, I want to leave more on a happier note. Mm -hmm. I want, you know, because we have overcame this, um, my family is closer than ever. I love my mom. I know my mom watched because I, I told her to watch. I sent her the link. She was like, baby, I don't know how to open it up. But I was like, get Zoe to do it for you. Right. <laughs> right. And, um, so I want to, we, we got to, we celebrate in life. We celebrate in overcoming. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating black girl magic. Right. 
but you know, one thing, not everybody has like a happy ending like you were. Not saying able I have career, a happy ending. Or, or <laughs> on a, on a, on a uh, positive path in that you're able to start healing yeah. relationships. So I would like to know pretty much from Stephanie, like what are some steps that women can take to start to empower themselves or maybe what steps that you guys have taken to empower yourself to really overcome these type of things? Um, I think something that I have done um, over the years was become a mentor mm -hmm. um, with young kids, um, YMCA or shelters, or um, I volunteer with a lot of community service um, events through Greater DC Cares, um, mm -hmm. women's shelters, or single moms, or things like that to get involved in children's mm -hmm. lives at a young age because most times it starts happening when you're really young. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones who don't have no one to talk to or um, don't feel comfortable talking to their immediate family. So if I'm someone an outsider who they feel like they can relate to or feel comfortable with talking with, mm -hmm. then I'm there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So getting involved with, um, um, I guess youth, period, um, right. is a way that you can kind of overcome or bring, um, just bring it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing that, just since we're, we spoke of it, and like I said, me and this young lady have came such a long way, and because I don't want to let her go, because we are on this journey together, she just don't know yet. <laughs> um, and we love some of the same things. I'm speaking my nonprofit organization into existence um i want to get into those schools pretty soon i'll be able to take my podcast or my live internet show wherever i want to go and, and that's just god working and you know birthing i'm giving birth to something i'm yes. giving birth to a couple of things yeah. and, uh, <laughs> i'm so excited i will be welcoming my second child into the oh. world I'm so ready just to celebrate life and giving birth. And, you know, I'm give, this is my baby. This is my passion. This is what God has placed over me, on me, in my heart. I was searching for what was my purpose. I love to motivate. I love to inspire. I love to share my story. I'm mm -hmm. talking into existence, my book. Mm -hmm. I don't know the title yet, okay. <laughs> but it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. And, I, and, and the type of person I mm -hmm. am, I know it won't just be me. And I don't know That's what right. the story will be about yet, but I'm mm -hmm. just speaking it into existence. As and one should. thing about having a relationship with me, it's like just having a relationship with just everything God is birthing mm -hmm. into me. Yeah. So, like, if you're touching me, you already blessed, girl. You don't even know. Thank you. You don't even know, but that's just the power of God and just seeing where mm -hmm. I started from this year. You know, just, like, even with this show, at the beginning of the show, I was like, oh, my God, I done signed this contract, and uh, I was found out I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is this the right time? And mm -hmm. if I could have backed out, I would have. But I can honestly say this is the best thing that could have happened to me like right yeah, now. That's excellent. So this is excellent. it's so always nice meeting you ladies. Yeah. Like Kiki don't know. She my new sister. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm on this journey. I definitely always have you. Mm -hmm. And always, um, yeah. she, she's like my secret guidance counselor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling her like, Hey, this is my idea. Like, mm -hmm. And I'm putting it on paper, and I'm just exactly. loving exactly what God is doing in my life. So yeah, it's so I'm excited powerful. to yeah. be walking right now in my purpose. Yeah, so yes. you, know, you guys would not be seeing Listen Vision Live. I, I always promote. <laughs> <laughs> you guys gonna see, you know, busy with me and my logo and all that good stuff. So I'm so excited about where the show's going. Right. Yeah. That's and excellent. that's the way that I give back. Yes. Awesome. Uh, well, I just want to end the note on just letting everybody know that you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, we, um, those of us that are strong, that have gotten through, we have to speak up. That's one way that it's going to work because it's circular. Like you said, yeah. these cycles are broken when some of us are strong enough to step out. So that's what we have to do literally in our communities because someone is going to give you that eye contact maybe yeah. and you're just going to make eye contact back with them and that's just going to let 
you know, that's my moment to engage. Yeah. So just a really simple way, you know, something short and sweet, you know, engage with eye contact. Look these kids in the eyes and ask them and then believe them when they talk to you yes. about what you're saying. Don't be shocked. Well, you can be shocked. You know what? I, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I hear I'm the best mom in the world, but even I need a little work with just communicating. Because being a mom didn't come with a menu, a right. menu. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's this, you do this, this, and that. You know, I'm sure, you know, I don't do everything right, I'm sure. Especially okay. if you let Zoe tell it. Especially <laughs> with, the, with the new baby. But it's just great. But I, I don't, I want to be able to communicate with, right. with her. And she doesn't talk, like, I'm like, Zoe, why you feel like you can't talk to me? That's one yeah. of the things. I, it's like I want to be a rest friend, but I know I have to be stern because mm -hmm. we wasn't fortunate enough to have her dad in the house. So I think that was another thing yeah. that hinders a lot of situations. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it takes a village to raise a child. So, you know, whatever supports you do have, that is also uh, really important to use. So as a mom, it's okay that, you know, your child may be uh, more comfortable talking to their teacher about certain things, and that's yeah. when you partner. Or their grandma. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That partnership. Yes. Yeah, it is about partnership, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely good. Anybody have anything to add? Because I could talk, you know. Yes. <laughs> Y'all know I could talk, that You know, you want to give me the floor, I can, I can hold it down. Yeah. But, um, like again, I'm just super excited yeah. on my journey, on my path. I'm, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she 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 locked into me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, we've been what, going at this back and forth. For, yeah, like, for for a little for, bit. For a little bit. And it's it's just so good to see the progress that you know we've been making and just how everything is growing. And but the level of motivation. Yeah. Um, is very impressive. You and gotta it's go always get your there. blessing. You yeah, can't you gotta go around. snatch it. That's right. <laughs> Put your hand out. You, you, gotta, you gotta go yes. get it. You gotta go get it. So. But I really, I thank you for inviting me um, to be a part of the show today because, like I said, you know, just looking at TV and the images and the dialogue around this topic, and you know, I feel like women are being tr treated unfairly right now. Um, or maybe not unfairly, but we're just not being heard. We're not being heard. We're not being heard. Because we're not being always seen as equal. Yes. You know, they want to say it's equal, mm -hmm. but um, just to see how they downplay the woman for telling mm -hmm. her story and speaking out. And mm -hmm. tell her she's, you know, she's lying. Yeah. And then the whole, it's not just it's not the right. people that's actually... I mean, it's the victim. She's standing there, she's mm -hmm. the victim. Mm -hmm. And it's the world. Mm -hmm. Throwing stones at her. Right. I think one thing that, you know, you talked about mentorship and everything. That's really important. Even me, if being in my early 30s, I need a mentor, you mm -hmm. know. I think I it's important you, that we instead. Yeah. <laughs> right. She's my mentor and my therapist, yeah. you know. And um, I think it's important that we start to treat young girls the power of being assertive and really asserting ourselves into conversations and into different dialogues and being a collective unit and protect each other, mm -hmm. you know? So especially us being young black women, we got to learn how to protect our little black girls, you know? Oh, so, I like that. Although we are all women up here, um, it does happen to little boys as well. Oh, that is so, true. So yeah. um, even if it's happening to a little boy, um, it's okay to speak up. Um, mm -hmm. Don't feel like, you know, men should be strong. That's not something that you need to hold in. Speak yeah. up, speak out. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. Yeah. Um, get help. <laughs> get help. <Yeah. laughs> speak up, speak out, and get help. And that's mainly the help the issue and especially with men they just don't communicate like us mm -hmm. you know women Girl. we we act out in one way or another <laughs> you know they, they it just don't come out like it'll come out of us you know we gonna show it you know mm -hmm. they won't show it and they won't talk about it yeah you know and i you know i try to stay away from things i don't have a boy you know and i don't know that relationship mm -hmm. so you know that's why i kind of geared it towards women but I'm all about speaking up and speaking out. And yes, I did invite men mm -hmm. to come on the show today. But of course, you know, we didn't get those inquiries. <laughs> <laughs> so, where y'all at? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I just thank you guys for just showing up and showing out today. Mm -hmm. This is a happy day. Yes, um, it is. We are part of a movement, and we mm -hmm. are speaking up, and we're speaking out. We're standing for something. Exactly. Yes. I yeah. love that. So guess what, though? 
what? Each and every Monday at 6 o'clock. Hey. Busy right. with B. You know where to find me. I'm so excited. Next mm-hmm. week's show is going to be a little lighter. I'm going to, um, I don't know, I may change it, but I really love talking about relationships. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's uh-huh. been a while since we had a relationship show. Okay. Mm. So next week, I have a great guy joining me in the studio. Um, Boots. I'm gonna kind of kidnap him. I want to check out chemistry out on screen, and mm-hmm. you know, but he's just all around a, a great person. And um, I met him here, and um, I had him on as a guest. He's gonna actually come on as a, a host. He's a married man with a lot of knowledge and a lot of education. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to land my mm-hmm. ring, yeah. ladies. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, <laughs> baby. I know you listening. <laughs> oh, <whatever. laughs> like no but um <laughs> make sure you guys tune in each and every monday at six o'clock busy will be grow with me yes. let the show grow mm-hmm. um you guys are gonna see the changes and see all that good stuff and we won't stop here we will bring it up again if we yeah. want to like i said um i do have a fun show for the kids october the 22nd i okay. have a I'm I'm a surprise. I'm gonna wait till I get a little bit closer. All right, I, all right. It's it's gonna be so much fun. You okay. know, like a party show. I mean, you gonna oh, see you gonna meet okay. Zoe. Oh nice. And she's gonna be here in the studio. And some of my friends, if you're listening, bring your kids through. Okay. Oh my god. What, what's the date? Um, October the twenty second okay, is October a great 22nd show. At six p.m. Um, yes. Okay. At cool. 6 p.m. The 29th, you are going to be able to meet my personal therapist. Yeah. Um, she will not be sharing my stories, but, uh, she'll be here with me. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm so excited about Very that. Nice. So, um, again, we are going to touch on things that people are afraid to talk about. Yeah. yeah let's talk you about know, it. Um, so make sure you guys tune in. Mm-hmm. Every Monday. Every Monday. <laughs> tune Monday. in, but share with yeah. your friends. Yeah, you share. Know? Yes. I'm, you know, I want to meet Ellen and, you know, Oprah. Yes. You know, no, but honestly, I'm just, if we can just help and reach one person, I feel like, I just feel so complete. Right. So even like just reaching you, Kiki, and you coming out, that just speaks so much, it just speaks so much value, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to give me your time. You didn't have to share your story. Like I said, she got a new, new girlfriend. Good, good girlfriend. (laughs) But I'm just so appreciative. Thank you so much, Stephanie Walker, for the last minute come out. And DC, uh, it's so hard to get through on these lines and Mm -hmm. really talk to someone. You got these programs. Let's be happy to be at work because I called quite a bit. I'm not going to put y'all on blast like that. <laughs> but when you have these jobs and you working in customer service, you make that person feel welcome mm-hmm. because I will be testing y'all out and I'm going to start calling y'all out. You see the face? <laughs> you see that face? No. But no. Um, seriously, um, though, but you guys are here to give us a service. Give us a service because I surely, I surely been calling these lines just to, you know, test out what I wanted to tell my customers. I mean, yeah. what I wanted to tell my guests. Yeah, customer service um, is yeah, key. Yeah, but customer service is key. Mm-hmm. We are going to tune off, and when we do, you guys are going to be able to see the hotline numbers. And that's only if you are logged on to listenvisionlive.com. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. tune in there each and every week, Monday at 6 o'clock, and you'll see um, my beautiful face. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys thank for coming guys. out today thank you. kiki thank you. stephanie yes mm-hmm. shara mm-hmm. thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Woo! all Have right a great-